So how does a musical artist develop a unique style? Well, there's talent and hard work and also inspiration. At the age of 26, guitarist Yasmin Williams is combining those key ingredients to create a sound all her own. Special correspondent Tom Cachado has this story for us for our arts and culture series, Canvas. At first listen, Yasmin Williams might seem just another great acoustic guitar picker. But keep your ears and eyes open and you'll find that her approach is all her own. From the New York Times to Rolling Stone, from music sites Pitchfork to Paste, she's been hailed as what the Washington Post calls a new kind of guitar hero. Maybe it's the piano-like hammer on the guitar strings. Or maybe it's the microphone picking up her tap shoes. Maybe it's the video of her riding a train through Baltimore during a pandemic. Or maybe it's her offhand stage presence. So like, okay, did that song sound happy or sad to you guys? Yeah. Happy. Yeah, no, I was like miserable when I wrote it. Like, completely like broken. Whatever the case, as Yasmin Williams' musical biography shows, you don't become a new kind of guitar hero by following an ordinary path. In my head, if someone were to look at me, they probably wouldn't expect me to make solo acoustic guitar music. She was born to Northern Virginia parents who played young Yasmin the sounds of R&B, hip hop, smooth jazz, and the 70s brand of Washington DC funk called Go-Go none of which drove her toward early admiration for the acoustic guitar. I thought it was the lamest instrument. I thought it was super corny. I thought singer-songwriters played it and they played four chords and sang about their dog or whatever and that was it. <laughs> I didn't really think it could do anything <laughs> substantial. But beyond that, she had no models for the kind of solo acoustic guitar music she's now known for, a genre so often represented by white male players. I definitely still wish that I had someone to look up to who was doing what I'm doing now, just to kind of be a guiding light. I mean, someone I can point to and be like, you know, that's really cool, I can do that. As for guitar music, her first love was heavy metal, first encountered in, well, the video game Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero is an experience. So you have a guitar-shaped controller, and it has five buttons that are different colors. And you have to push the corresponding, like, colored button that shows up on the screen like this fellow does in this YouTube red, demo. yellow, blue tap, red, yellow, blue tap, orange tap. You had to orange, tap yellow, really quickly, tap. and I got good at that, and I beat the game. Once I got my real guitar, I wanted to, like, transfer the tapping skills onto a real guitar, and that's obviously a big part of my playing. Tapping on the guitar neck is just one of the percussive elements she employs to create a unique style. So for those who don't know, this is called a kalimba. And do, do y'all know Earth, Wind and Fire? You've mentioned Earth, Wind and Fire as an influence. Yes, they are my favorite band. I first um, heard a kalimba from them. Maurice White played a very long kalimba solo and I was a kid. I maybe four or five. And I remember hearing like the tone of his kalimba and just wondering like, what is that? It's not a saxophone, it's not a guitar, it's not drums, what is that? The kalimba is a Southern African instrument with a wooden soundboard and steel keys. It's an unlikely accessory taped to the body of an acoustic guitar but it makes sense when she's explained it. Others of her inspirations are a bit harder to explain. One is Jimi Hendrix, you know him. The other is the godfather of go-go, Chuck Brown. What do sounds like this have to do with her music? Jimi Hendrix and Chuck Brown? Yeah. Hard to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not really gonna hear much Chuck Brown. You're not gonna hear many go-go beats in my music. <laughs> But I mean more, I'm influenced by how a musician carries themselves or expresses themselves in their music. For example, Chuck Brown, um, a go-go legend, is an influence on me because he basically changed the musical landscape of an entire region, Washington, D.C., by himself. The same thing with Jimi Hendrix. He played the guitar masterfully no one knew what he was doing, 
no one knew how he was doing it. He didn't really care what critics had to say in terms of him playing quote unquote wrong. He played what he wanted to play. Yasmin Williams makes music without lyrics, but not without meaning. Her latest album is called Urban Driftwood. Urban, meaning me. I come from an urban background. My family comes from an urban background. Um, and that's really important to me. Driftwood, I feel like the black community is kind of treated like driftwood as such. Lots of people love our culture and love what we do, but they don't particularly treat us with the respect that we deserve a lot of the time, considering how significant our influence has been for centuries. And driftwood is a lot of the time seen as trash or, or something that is not really needed. Even though it houses m tons of marine life, um, it's very beautiful. You say that when you were young, you didn't see somebody who looked like you playing solo acoustic guitar. Do you ever think about how somebody now who's a kid is going to see Yasmin Williams and say, she looks like me? Oh, that's enough to make me cry. I mean, I hope that happens. That'll be incredible. <laughs> that's just like... You know, people are now watching... Give me a second. I'm actually crying. Yeah. <laughs> For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Tom Cachado.